Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you good this afternoon? Amen. Amen. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Um, first of all, I'm grateful to see all of you uh, once again in the house of the Lord uh, in this midweek service. I thank you very much for continuing to come uh, and continuing to be found in the presence of the Lord. Um, I must say that uh, I've covered quite much in this uh, Wednesday service since we started and uh, I have uh, avoided series in this uh, particular service but maybe uh, I've covered one or two there about but uh, maybe next week or there about I can begin a series or a mini series. I'm used to series and on Sundays, but I believe uh, uh, maybe next week or thereabout I can start something. And today I want to speak about something that uh, uh, got me thinking, uh, especially observing the world that we are living in right now, surrounded by so many things, so many people, and uh, a lot of confusion for that matter. And I have called this message, or I have titled this message, Beyond Face Value. Beyond Face Value. We are going to be reading from the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, beginning from verse 13 through to 20. Um, there are some few words there, but I want us to learn a few things. Uh, Matthew's... Uh, Chapter 7, beginning from verse 13. And this is what the Bible says. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their heart. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be uh, that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening uh, wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from bones, or figs from thistles? Uh, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And a, a, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is hewn uh, down and cast into the fire. And uh, the last one, verse 20, Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. First of all, to start, um, this is the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, once Jesus went onto the mountain and uh, he started teaching people, because there were so many, he had to be somewhere elevated, and he started teaching them. So from chapter number five of the book of Matthew all the way to chapter number nine, thereabout, that is the Sermon on the Mount. It was quite bulky one, and it has a lot of teachings. And these are straight words from Jesus. So whenever we are uh, considering them, let us understand, they are not an analysis of a writer, neither are they observations or, or, of someone or reported speech. This is Jesus himself speaking to the crowd. And uh, he was teaching them so many things about uh, the way of life, how to live with others, to relate with others, how to pray, how to uh, forgive, how to do also those so many things and how even to relate with God. And um, um, when he gets there, or when he gets here to chapter number seven, he, he, he tells us a few things, and uh, particularly these verses from verse uh, 13 to 20, and even if you go beyond, he was comparing about two things, the narrow and the broad path, uh, the good and the bad tree, uh, 
between two professions and then later on he's talking about between two foundations of a, a, a good foundation and a poor foundation and therefore we are going to be finding some of those comparisons in the particular portion that we have read but I told you that uh, what prompted me to talk about this uh, beyond face value when you talk, we talk about value we are just talking about worth what is something worth how valuable it is um, and uh, I'm saying beyond face value because we see something and we are attracted to it and it appeals to us and we may attach some value to it we may even go ahead to inquiring about it or even purchasing it or even uh, following it or if it's a person and all that and uh, I thought it is important for us to start interrogating some of these things because um, as it is as time goes by you realize what you saw is not what it end up or it ends up being something changes along the way so was it uh, that the thing was fake or counterfeit or deception all along or was it that uh, something changed along the way and your guess is as good as mine in fact it is obvious that it was false fake counterfeit all along it is like it's not like something changed along the way so that um, everything has something beyond what you see it's very important to understand that everything has something beyond what you see even as far as people are concerned everyone has something beyond what you see the face value you can see someone and judge them according to what you have seen in them you can see something and judge it according to how you have seen it and this is what we call the face value and um, either in between or beneath there is something hidden there that you may not be able to see on the face value in between or beneath that's why it is good to go in between and beneath something and not conclude judging with the face value because i realize there is a lot of deception in the world that we are living in and there is a lot of like uh conmanship and all that because people are not careful uh to go beyond what they see to dig deep to do their due diligence they are not careful because what is appealing is not always assuring that's an important statement to, to understand that what is appealing is not always assuring that it may be appealing looking good from the face value but it may not be necessarily assuring later on that it is going even to maintain that face value even to maintain whatever it is that you saw it is not assuring so that it is important for us to understand that uh, whatever you are seeing given one or two days one or two years one or two decades is it going to remain the same and the answer is probably not probably not very few can remain the same it is also important for us to understand because when it comes to people and things that a passenger will never take a different route or direction from the vessel it's very important for us to understand that a passenger will ne never take a different route from the vessel the vessel that they board the vessel that carries them they will end up getting to that destination of that vessel and therefore any route that you take has a destination any route that you take has a destination there is no route without a destination and therefore it is important for us to pause at some point 
and retreat at some point and ask ourselves, where are we headed? Where are we headed? Are we still on the right path? And no wonder now Jesus, he started talking about this and talking about the narrow and the broad path. The narrow and the broad path. And, 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 and in verse 13 there, he is saying, enter in at the straight gate. Straight gate. For he is saying, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereafter. Or thereat. Now, there are two parts here that are compared, as I told you earlier. The narrow and the broad. And their destinations are told that the narrow one, if you go further to verse 14, uh, that it says it leads to life. But the broad one here is leading to destruction. This is what, because the straight, uh, or straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few uh, there be that find it. Now, Jesus is talking about something very, very significant here. The fact that the wide and the broad gate and path has many people, it does not mean that it is followed because it is broad. No. No, no, no. no. In my own estimation, it has been broadened due to congestion. <laughs> due to congestion. Now, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. We used to, for those of you that have lived around uh, Vika Road for quite a while, you realize that there used to be another highway before the super highway. What happened? The government realized that um, it is slowly becoming congested and uh, you could barely move, especially those who commute daily uh, to work in town and all that. And when the government realized it's becoming like uh, too congested and it is not serving the interests of the either citizens or the government or whoever, they had to widen it. But remember, there are so many other parts that are still as narrow as they are. Why? It is because those other parts, they have fewer people. <laughs> so following that analogy, you, you, you would realize here, it is not like the broad path was broad by default. No, 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 no. It was broadened out of necessity that those that were there then, the devil who is the facilitator of this broad path, he realized, oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought just a few people are coming on this path because it is leading to destruction. Now it has so many clients, so many people. So I need to broaden it so that they can all be accommodated and no one will miss a place in this path so that there will, there will not be excuses that I tried to follow this broad path but it was too congested I could not manage so to, 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 to remove any kind of excuse it was broadened so therefore it means that it started with few people and the kind of behavior and the kind of uh, uh, things and activities that were happening along the way were appealing to many and many were influenced and began to follow. Therefore, it is important for, for us to realize that not everyone that is following this broad path chose to follow this path by themselves. They were influenced to choose it. They were pushed. They were motivated by certain factors, as I have, I, I have explained. Because it looks like uh, it has no rules, no restrictions. Um, it has, you know, some of those things that would 
con be considered as pleasures. Um, it has everything that is affordable so that no one feels constrained or, or, and all that. And, and, um, and uh, the door is wide open. No, it has no restrictions. And, and I'll tell you, and I'll give you another comparison. In places where you find that there are so many rules and guidelines and requirements and, you know, and uh, uh, so many things that you need to do, hmm? so many thresholds that you need to meet, so many standards that you meet, need to meet, you, you realize in such places there are so few people, very few people. But in places where there are no rules whatsoever, there are no limitations, the door is wide open. Everybody comes and there is no even security check. You are not even asked where you are going. Because everyone is just welcome. The door is wide open. People flock there. But in that, these other places that have restrictions, you realize there are fewer people. And, and no wonder now, in this other path, in this other path, it is becoming narrow and straight and with a few people because it has rules, it has restrictions, it has requirements that needs to be met without which you have to be removed out of the way. This path, the narrow one, you cannot follow it unless you comply. Unless you comply, you cannot follow it. No wonder, even today, uh, for, for those that live in Kenya, you realize that uh, there are countries that are very accessible to us but you find everyone going there but there are countries that have so many restrictions so many restrictions so many so that even those countries giving ordinary people visas it's difficult it's difficult so that you find very few people going but there are other places whereby you just go boom no questions you are given a visa hmm? you find so many people there you find so many people there, but in place, there are places where you can begin to count the number of foreigners that are there because there are so many restrictions, so many guidelines, so many requirements. And such is the kingdom of God. There are requirements, there are standards, there are things of necessity that you must bear for you to qualify and to be allowed to follow such a path. And therefore, very few, very few follow it. But this other path, everyone is influenced because from the face value, it is affordable. <laughs> and people uh, uh, have this tendency of saying nowadays that uh, cheap is expensive. Sometimes those things that we think are very cheap, they end up costing us a lot, more than the money that we spend on them. So that they say, oh, you would rather have gone for an expensive one strain yourself deny yourself certain pleasures and go for it and settle it once and for all rather than going for this cheap one and then you end up paying a very huge price for it trying to repair it to maintain it to keep up with it and all that and you end up spending more than the rigid one that was quite maybe expensive for you so that it is very important to ask ourselves eh? At the moment, what vessel have we bought it? Tony, what vessel are you on board? Because you will never go arrive at a different destination from the vessel. Is, if the vessel is heading west, you will end up to the west. If it is headed east, you will end up in the east. Because you will never take a different route from or direction from the vessel. So at this point, let me ask you something. Who inspires you? Or what ins inspires you? Because you realize that all this that Jesus is talking about, it boils down to inspiration. Who is it that inspires you in life? What is it that inspires you? Because it is very important that that which inspires you sometimes makes you, determines your direction, you know, influences you, guides you. 
and you end up being a f the final product of you is who or what inspires you because this broad gate there are so many people there are so many people that are inspiring others there and i say today we 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 are looking at a, a world whereby people are living and i've said this before a co very competitive life instead of living an ordinary life and uh, people living by their own within their own means people are competing a lot of competition a lot of competition especially in the social media and in the main, mainstream media people are competing to become what to look like what you know to be the best to be the best people are competing and they are making a lot of efforts to compete so that you realize that there are people that are being inspired by others to enter into a race that they do not need to enter into in the first place because why would i want to get into a race that i don't know what is the outcome of this race what is the destination of this race what is the expectation in this race if i win what do i get if i lose what do i lose or what do i get if i'm a loser because it is important for us to ask ourselves that at the end of the day what do i end up being because that competition and that's why i say it, it is good to go beyond the face value because it, in the course of that competition people have ended up losing themselves how by being influenced so much so that they have lost themselves and they have become other people so that either they are living like other people or they are living the life of other people <laughs> and may i tell you at this point that god has created you unique and he has given you a life of yourself and a life of your own and an image of yourself and you can be able to influence others through that person you don't have to be someone else you don't have to live the life of other people because that is what has made this very broad path to be broadened and in fact it continues to be broadened because the followers of such a path continue to increase by the day every day they are increasing and therefore it is of necessity to, to broaden it like you will realize even <laughs> on the expanded superhighway it is continuing to be expanded or it's continuing to be uh, crowded and and in the future it might be required to be expanded so is this broad path it may require to be expanded every day because the followers are becoming so many so many because people that you follow take you to their destination this you must understand and no wonder he was saying later on about these prophets this prophet and uh, he, he is saying about this false beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing that is the face value you look at them they are a sheep but it, deep inside them they are wolves this but they are inwardly or inwardly they are ravening wolves inside of them they are wolves face value they are sheep very good now what do prophets do because you might say maybe uh, i'm out of context with this no i'm not i'm not because prophets they will come with something a message that is supposed to drive you to a particular direction they will come with a message that is supposed to drive you into acting a particular way doing things of a particular manner becoming a particular person and therefore when they are false they will come in sheep clothing determined to take you to the broad path you remember the broad path don't forget that broad path but since they are clothed in uh, uh, sheep clothing you are not able to identify them 
they will influence you to a particular direction. And later on, you will end up where they were headed. Where they were headed. Because you become a follower. And if you follow me, surely, if you follow me, and don't lose me, and don't change direction, definitely where I am headed, that is where you will be headed. Without a doubt. Whoever you follow, you end up where they are headed. Where they are headed. And we must ask ourselves at that point then, who are we following? Because these, there are so many, the false prophets. There are so many, and we are told, beware, beware of them, beware of them. There are so many. So, let me give you like uh, three or so lessons uh, as I wind up, because I don't want to proceed so much. That, number one, do not just follow a path because it has a huge following. Let me repeat. Do not just follow a path because it has a huge following. Now, many of us, the explanation that we have, in fact, some of us have, have no explanation whatsoever, but the explanation that we always have is that uh, we are doing things the way we are doing because many people are doing them that way. We speak the way we speak because many people are speaking that way. We, we follow the direction that we follow because many people are following that direction. We are where we are because there are as many people as possible. And that, that, that's not a good explanation. That's not a good explanation. Because remember, when it comes to accounting, it is every knee. All right? You remember, George? It's every knee. And it's every tongue. If, if that's Philippians chapter number 2, verse 9. Eh? When Jesus was given a name above every other name, say that every knee should bow and every time confess that Jesus is the Lord. And to that effect, everyone gives their own account. Everyone gives. That's it. Philippians uh, uh, 2 verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things um, in earth and the things underneath. Every, every. So that we are following a particular direction, sometimes because of huge following, without knowing that when it comes to appearing before our maker, because all of us were created by God, whether we believe in him or not, we were created by God. When we arrive before him, the question will not be a mass question. Uh, everybody, like uh, we are asked, like a huge group in terms of a village, a family, a town, a county, a country, a continent, or believers and non-believers in equal measure. No, everyone will be asked to account for themselves, and therefore it is very important for us to realize that let's not just follow a path because everyone else is following that path or because it has a majority. Because as far as Jesus' explanation is concerned, the other path has no followers. It has very few following. You know, and, and, and no one wants to be in such a path that um, looking at it, very few people, hmm, nothing appealing, nothing as exciting. You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> it is not the number of people. It is about, is it the right path? Is it the right path? Is it the right path? And all of you know, in this country, many times, just the other day, my wife and I were driving along a road, and uh, we were seeing someone that is undecided. There was huge traffic. There was very huge traffic. And uh, 
you know matatus the way they start you know being uh, creative and all that they want to follow other paths and uh, they were turning toward a particular path and there was another motorist there that is uh, they want to follow them but they don't know this route where it is headed and they were undecided follow or not follow follow and not follow and everybody else was scooping because they are undecided hmm? they want to follow they, 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 no 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 they want to follow and, and I, I told her the reason as to why this person wants to follow them it is because all of a sudden there is a smell up in traffic and all of a sudden like five cars have followed that route and this person is thinking this route is heading somewhere but the question is are you headed where they are headed <laughs> because by the end of the day Tony you have your home if after this service, if we start going home and I follow you, I will end up at your home and then you will tell me, did you want something? Were you visiting or something? If not, then you tell me I have arrived in my destination. <laughs> so, <laughs> you either continue with your destination or wherever it is that you are going. You are going because at the end of the day, let me tell you something. Whether people are, seem to know what they are doing or not, they have a particular path that they have chosen to follow. So don't just follow because they are following. Because they have decided. They have decided. And sometimes, let me tell you, together with that is that even when you have not decided, motion is a decision. If you are making motion, Tony, even when you are undecided, that motion equals to a decision. <laughs> Because you are moving toward a, towards a, direct, a particular direction so that even if someone asks you and you are telling them, mm, I'm not decided, I'm not fully decided whether to follow this path. But as far as, as long as you are making motion, that equals to a decision. That equals to a decision. Because, you know, I, I, I've heard of these stories, I've heard of these stories, <laughs> uh, people that were in the wrong places, eh? Like for example, you go to take a soda in a bar or in a club that people are taking illicit brew and all that. And, uh, when poli police arrive, they don't like ask you, you are taking soda, you, you are taking this. They, they fetch everyone. Eh? And then you find maybe there was a good person there, George, trying to say, no, 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 me, I was just there taking a soda. No, when they came, because as far as you were there, you were among, among them. And where, whatever it is that they are they were doing, it is assumed that you were together with them. It is assumed that you were concurring with whatever it is that they are doing. So, point number one, don't just follow a path because it has a large following. Very important. If, if today you are following a path because it has many people, quit from that path. Change that path and start following your own path. Whether it has people or not, sometimes you may have to be alone. Sometimes you may have to be alone. <laughs> but you need to follow your path. Point number two, very important. Do not be influenced by people whose background is unknown to you. Do not be influenced by people whose background is unknown to you. Now, this is it. Now, everyone is following someone. Everyone is following someone. In, in fact, in terms of what is trending, what is not trending and all that, you realize there are people who set those trends. That even those trends are not natural in nature. They are not natural. <laughs> they are set by people. There are certain people that have decided in their lives, what I want to be is a pace setter, and I want to be a person that is always trending, so that setting the trends. Because if you do something that is not trending, no one follows you. No one follows you. And no one even is bothered. But if you do things that are trending in nature and they trend, and uh, everyone is talking about them, everyone is looking at them, then many people may follow. But they are just judging you from the face value. They have not checked your background. Because this is what Jesus was saying, going back to, to our text. That you shall know them by their fruit. 
Because he was saying, you do not. <laughs> hmm? Men do not gather grapes from vaults or figs from thistles. You shall know them by their fruits. That is the background. That's the background. So that many people, sometimes, and I've seen this over time, I've seen, and I must confess, I must confess, we live in the same world. I've seen people, there are people who came into my life, my life, personal life, and uh, they are very influential, very appealing in the way they behave, the way they do their things, the way they talk, the way they dress, the way they, whatever it is that they do. And I felt like I was so much influenced. And I felt like this is the kind of person that I want to associate with and relate with and follow and all that. Um, but later on, they end up to be something else. Even before I have fully like uh, <laughs> followed them or something, something that boom comes out and manifests what it is that was on the background. What it is that was hidden. What it is that was hidden. And I come to tell myself, oh, oh, oh. I was heading to destruction and I did not know. Because I thought all was good, all, all was appealing, all was okay. Everything is perfect. Everything is in place. And I have, no, 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 no. Where have I been? Why, why have I entire seen this person this long? Why did he have to appear in this stage of my life and not earlier? Maybe it's good that he would have appeared earlier because he would have shaped my life in a different way. Only to realize that was the face value. So that I needed to go beyond the face value. And it is very important that when you feel like someone is really appealing to you and they somehow are influencing your behavior, and your direction, check their background. Check their background. Do not allow yourself to be influenced by them simply because they are talking well, hmm? they look very well organized, they sound like they know business, especially in business, there are people who begin to speak and you feel, wow, where have I been? Hmm? Millionaires and billionaires in this country are made by people like this. I wish I had met you before and I would have been a very rich man. Tony, sounds familiar? Yes, I know it does. <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> People who have a very good appealing speech, they tell you about business that they do, they tell you how you are going to make money and you feel, wow, hey, where have I been? Where have I been? So that whatever it is that they are asking for you to look for, uh, maybe in terms of capital or something, whatever it is, you run up and down, help us, skelter, trying to raise whatever it is because where have I been? In fact, that is when you drop some of your good, genuine friends and you have no time for them because they seem to be insignificant in your life. You have finally made a breakthrough and you have found someone that is leading you into the right path of becoming a millionaire. Only to realize, <laughs> Tony, later. <laughs> You are a con man <laughs> or a con woman. <laughs> My wife and I met one person, <laughs> I think it was last year or there, about. I don't want to tell their story here. <laughs> but the stories we were given, wow. The place that we were taken, wow. The things that we saw, woo. We were feeling like this is it, this is it now. Eh? <laughs> These are the kind of connections we have been missing in our lives. Have you ever reached that stage of your life you feel? This is the kind of connection I have been praying from God. And you start thanking God. You pray there, there and then. You don't wait to pray later and thank God. You thank God inwardly even when you are having a conversation with this person. Because you feel that this is the moment of my life. You are feeling, whoo, these are the kind of people we want connections with. And maybe, just maybe I was thinking in my life, I have no time for so and so. <laughs> I don't want to name names. <laughs> I have no time for so and so because they are of no value to my life. <laughs> now I have time for such a person. Let alone. <laughs> I don't want to finish the story. 
<laughs> so, check the background. Lastly, follow the fruit and not the tree. I will say it categorically. Follow the fruit and not the tree. Jesus said so. Jesus said so. That you shall know them by their fruits. And if you continue in the following verses, what he is saying there, that so, uh, so uh, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt uh, tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, and even the last two verses says, every tree that bringeth not for uh, good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That, those are the consequences of bad trees. Uh, but now, wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Many times, what we have been following, whenever we find ourselves in deception, is the tree, not the fruit. We saw the tree was very green. The tree was appealing. The tree was looking good. The tree had been pressed well. The tree was looking like the kind of fruit that can produce massive production. You know, we have been following the tree. Many times when we have been deceived. But Jesus is saying, forget the tree for a moment and follow the fruit. So that if you follow the fruit, you will never go wrong. Because he's say, he saying, in other words, it is impossible for a good tree to produce bad fruit. Or, again, it is impossible for a corrupt tree, evil tree, to produce good fruits. If it is corrupt, it's going to produce corruption. If it is bad, it is going to produce bad. It is, if it is good, it is going to produce good. So, so that it is important for us to know that while we have been following the tree, the fruits were forthcoming. And when the fruit came, we were surprised. We said, hey, hey, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not what we were expecting. We were expecting something different. But the problem was, we followed the tree, not the fruit. And this is what um, this man, and I told you about him, called Lot. Remember the nephew of Abraham? When they were separating with Abraham, they had pastures that could not accommodate both of them. And uh, there was this conversation. The, 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 the husband started arguing and all that, quarreling for pastures, eh? because they had been blessed so much with livestock. And uh, Abraham said, there is no need. We are brothers. There is no need of us arguing. There is no need of us you know, nah, you know, arguing back and forth. It is important for us to do this. Choose a direction that you want to take. If you take north, I'll take south. If you take east, I'll take west. Whatever direction you take, I'll take the opposite. And Lot looked at the plains of Jordan. You remember, I talked about this when I was talking about uh, um, uh, Abraham. I, I believe uh, we were talking about the beauty of the promise. I talked about this. And I said that uh, Lot looked at the plains of Jordan before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He looked at those plains. They were very well watered. Meaning, they were very green. Very green. But now, a very good green tree tony will not necessarily produce good fruits. Right? So that the fruits may be different. The fruits may be bitter. And the, the tree was very green. It was very appealing, but the fruits are bitter. They are sometimes poisonous. They are sometimes of no value. So that, if you want to evaluate someone and the worth of someone do not judge them by their face value wait for their fruit if you follow the fruit you will never go wrong ask yourself in the past what fruits have they produced because now this can be two folds eh? this can be two folds and let me uh, maybe finish with both of those two two things that are very important he could mean eh? for example if you come across a tree a little tree eh? It could mean, be patient. Do not be in a hurry to follow or to be influenced. Be patient until 
that tree bears fruit so that you will know what kind of a tree it is by the fruits that it produces the other thing the flip side it could mean you know conduct a background check to ask yourself because this is not the first time it may not be the first time that this tree is producing fruit fruits it might have produced before and if you conduct a background check you might realize the kind of fruit it has produced before no wonder even today even today people are asking about referees when you are having employment you know people who can recommend you you know people who can speak on your behalf testimonials you know people are looking for such things to check your background if you have worked before if you have done before this and that how have you performed in those fronts or whatever how have other people perceived about yourself so that it is not just about today here and now it is about the past and the future because now what we are seeing may be green a very green tree but what it has produced in the past if we ignore it it is our, our own period if we ignore what it may produce in the future because what it has produced in the past it is very likely and it is definite according to jesus that it is going to produce those similar fruits in the future we cannot ignore there so let me ask you a question as i close how many trees have you followed without observing the fruits they produce how many times have you been deceived by the green tree how many times have you been deceived by people on the face value by their good speech by their good proposals and prepositions by their appearance you know by the looks by the size of their body by whatever it is you have been deceived you look at them and you say no mm, this is the kind of person that i want to follow this is the kind of person that i want to associate with this is the kind of person that i need to you know stay close to how many times have you been deceived so i'll tell you something wait for the fruit or conduct a background check about the past fruits what kind of fruits have those trees produced if someone is telling you they want to help you how many other people have they helped in the past that's a question if they want to pro pro project themselves as very good reliable people how have they been reliable in the past <laughs> How have they been? And I'm telling you this in good faith. Many times I write recommendations for people as a pastor, required in very many places, very many places. In fact, I'm surprised being a small man like I am and junior in this country as I am. I have written letters that have gone even places that I've never gone myself. Places that I've never gone myself and I wonder, hey, my letter is going beyond myself. Now, but uh, many times I am careful about what I write. You know, you, you know when people come to you they tell you uh, this is the kind of letter that I require and uh, the question is are they who <laughs> they are requiring you to write that they are <laughs> that's the question because I must ask myself if one time because you <laughs> once you graduate and come to me you want a letter a recommendation letter I ask myself whatever you are telling me to write <laughs> are you that kind of a person because if I write that you are such kind of a person, and maybe later on something happens, you know, I'm liable. And I can be asked, how comes that you told me this person is this way? Now, let me tell you of a call that I received from a, a, a person. There was a person in this church who left for another church. Still our church. They left for another church. No, this person, they, there is a person in a church that I was preaching that had just appeared, and they were looking for a job through this person through the recommendation of this person so that this person was asking me can i recommend this person to be hired by my friend because they come from your church are they good are they this? you know what i told them i gave them my, my honest opinion because it was a verbal recommendation i told them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's your decision to make. <laughs> you just make a decision. <laughs> if you want to recommend them, do, please do. If you don't, but as for me, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Really, either to recommend them or not. Because honestly, I don't know this person. I have not done a background check. Neither have I seen their fruit. So that they are very green. And they were very good. Later on, that person, my wife and I know, they ended up calling a guy because they were given just a menu job, a small menu job uh, in the homestead and all that. They stole a bicycle. <laughs> I don't know if they called this person. They lied that they had a barrio and or something. They, they, they were given money in advance, money that they had not worked for. They stole a bicycle from a guy that was traveling so far with this bicycle, an orphan. In fact, because I had a bicycle at home, I had to assist this orphan. Because this guy was an orphan who was going, I don't know, almost like 10 kilometers to high school. So he was riding every morning to, to school and back. This bicycle was the only means of transport. He does not have money. So the guy stole the bicycle. He did not steal it literally. He just lied to the guy. Let me, you know, pick something there and I'll come back. They lied to the employer. <laughs> We lost, um, uh, I don't know, our grandfather and all that, and I'm um, the only grandson and all that, and my father is late and all that, and he was given advance, <laughs> and they left. So this mama called me later and told me, hey, you are a guy, you were right. <laughs> what if I had recommended this person? Now let me tell you, we are living in such a world that don't judge anything from face value, especially I'm seeing majority I am here, do not be deceived by face value. Conduct a background check. Wait, be patient for the fruit because the fruit will finally come and you will know what kind of a person that they are. May the Lord bless you and be with you as we continue to interrogate through the word of God and people that we are allowing to influence our lives. Let's pray in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We honor you. We thank you for today. We thank you because you've talked to us, oh dear Lord, to look and to check beyond the face value. And my Father, we pray that you may help us, equip us with your word, so that we may be able to know that which is falsehood, that which is deceiving, the route that is straight and narrow, that we may follow it unto life, oh dear Lord. We thank you and glorify you. We honor you. Thank you for everyone that came, and thank you for everyone that is watching. I bless them, O dear Lord, and I believe you are going to bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Can you rise up for benediction as you come to a close? Amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord guide you through this week. May you be fruitful in whatever you do in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you.